Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Something to Do with Pete and Will. We promise it's something to do. Welcome back to It's Something to Do, and we promise this is something to do. Again, Will is on uh, paternity leave, and I am so pleased to have my uh, very close friend, Robbie Cole, back with me and willing to do this. Thank you for being here. You are very welcome. And I know that... I'm mostly uh, speaking to your audience right now. You are very welcome. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You're like, I avoid you like the plague. Kind of uh, like, fun like, choice of words the last two years, huh? What's that? I avoid you like the play. <laughs> yeah. Because here's the thing I learned. Mm-hmm. People say things like, oh, I avoid you like the plague. But what we learned is, uh, in America at least, when we have a plague, uh, no one actually gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll still go to fucking Disneyland without a mask. Because uh, oh, that's funny you say that. My children are at Disneyland right now. Ah, they Why were I have a cough? nice knowing them. <laughs> exactly, they don't walk around licking things, they're only little girls. Oh, they lick everything. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> taking it to a completely different place. I don't want to go. Listen, I'm, I'm up for jobs at major networks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see what we got here. Well, I mean, we could be topical at first. That's probably the best. But the uh, so this is going to come out on Tuesday. We're okay. shooting it on Tuesday, which we're not. But, you know, that's how Hollywood works. It's Hollywood ma- in magic. <laughs> yeah, but Alec Baldwin, um, and and this isn't funny at all. He, he, he shot and killed the cinematographer on his... And I, I'm a cinematographer, and so that I, I think I have a nervous laughter because I've been in situations where people are using squibs, you know, those things that pop out of your chest, or yeah. you're getting shot by something, and there's a lot that goes into those things. So there's pyrotechnics, and you have to be a certain, you yeah, know, distance away, and you use, you know, uh, forced perspective in order for it to look like it's happening right over the person. Look, I've been on a lot of sets, and I've, if I thought that any actor was going to shoot and kill any uh, sort of like crew member, it would be the AD. Like, <laughs> have we lost the crowd already? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, here's the thing. So, it's, so for those of you that don't know, being on a set when you have an AD, usually the director tells the AD go out there and supervise. And now with the pandemic and everything is probably that much more intense because oh, yeah. they have to go out there and tell everybody to put their masks on and you got to wear a certain color shirt. And it's all these weird things that you have to do in order to be a part of a set. And the AD, and the AD is the person who just like screams mm-hmm. at people. Right. And the director will come on and be like, Hey, we're doing really great. Everybody. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to go to you and scream at these people. If that guy in the background pretends like he's jerking off with that shovel one more time, yeah. he's out of the movie. Right. What are we putting up with? Are you guys even watching the dailies? Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Oh, uh, the AD is a bit of a pill. What are you going <laughs> to do? <laughs> I saw that out of everybody, like assistant directors have the shortest lifespan and like the most common cause of death is heart attack yeah and i'm like yeah no can we curse on this podcast of course everything shit yeah i mean nobody's watching so (laughs) exactly (laughs) but yeah that baldwin thing i got that i got like a news update as i was about to leave i was walking out the door and it's like alec baldwin kills somebody it's like hold on (laughs) was that a paparazzi yeah, but yeah, no, that sucks because like, I also don't like the way all the news. I mean, this is fresh. This just happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happened a week yesterday. ago. Yesterday, oh. yesterday. 
but when this airs, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but uh, all the other was like Alex Baldwin shoots somebody, but it's like this is a failure on everybody's part besides the actor involved. This is well, a that's what that's failure. What, exactly this is what armor about to say. failure. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, every sink like. And then I was looking into it. This is like a like a lower budget film. It's on that uh like SAG tier one budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know they're cutting corners. You know they're like I've worked on a set where we had um guns mm -hmm. and they literally bring them out in a locked container, armor opens it up, uh -huh. they go over the actors like we're gonna shoot like three times. They do. That's all built. They do the scene. When they cut, the actor immediately gives it back to the armor. They get it. They check it. They clear it. They set everything up again. It's either in the actor's hand or the armor's hand, and that's it. This one seems like it was just willy nilly. Just you walked some... up to a table at the craft service. Yeah, that wasn't even supposed to be there because of the pandemic. <laughs> uh, just picking up guns. Ah, uh, that is well, the thing. I don't know all the details. Do you know more details than I do? No, I, I, just, I just know that that happened. That I, that I happened. Don't, I don't know the... Also, man, uh, above the line talent killing a DP. That's right. That's great. That's a great thing to happen right before that IATSE strike vote. <laughs> oh, and it didn't go. Oh, well, they haven't ratified it yet. Oh, is that what the? Yeah. I, I don't. I mean... There's still a chance. <laughs> I'm sure this is really helping people's opinions. I'm uh, well. Listen, I'm I'm part of a union, and and so are you. And we, you know, so I I kind of keep that stuff close to the vest, <laughs> just because I'm not trying to upset anybody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, all the things. What what what's interesting just about that incident by itself is exactly that. Like, there's so many things and steps that are ha taking place yeah. in the before any of this happens yeah so uh, th so if the cinematographer is in front of you i mean there's it doesn't matter the budget of it you've got a a, a full camera rig and lighting rig and yeah. you probably have somebody hollywooding a light and you and the the director was there and and they got clipped too right yeah which is now i'm like i don't understand like it might have had live rounds in it I mean, and then I was like, that's insane. But then I realized they're shooting in New Mexico. And I was like, ah, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> we might need to actually use this. Yeah. But the, the but that happened to, to Bruce Lee's uh, son. Yeah, yeah. You know, on, on, on that crow. one. So with that, with theirs, so people don't know, um, this is now becoming a Hollywood and Ammunition podcast. Mm -hmm. um, right now. So... When they say again, it's a smash hit. I think yeah. we've been told that the last one that you were on was our best. All right. Well, that, that surprises no one. When you, <laughs> um, so blanks are actual guns, mm -hmm. and they are actual like. So they say they're when they say they were live rounds. That blanks are technically live rounds. It's a charge. It's a charge. And you have to be a certain distance yeah. away from it because it actually does yeah. expel expel, matter. but it just it's just missing. You know. Yeah. So like the squib, a squib gun will, can be, you can do the squibs where you have it on your body and they mm -hmm. go. And you also have squibs that basically become air softy mm -hmm. where it's like with a little thing there and it'll shoot, but it's not with, it's without the powder. And a blank is basically just the powder, but without. The so with, with Brandon Lee's, they were doing blanks and the gunpowder, you know, went off and shot and it left a, uh, uh, it didn't expel from the barrel. So there was still now just a piece um, in the barrel. And then when they shot the next blank of gunpowder, it expelled the thing in the barrel as though it were a bullet and just shot out. So it could be that situation here. But again, New Mexico, they probably just had live rounds in there, baby. Now, everybody listening in New Mexico, we just want to say that we, we love your uh, support and... Um... We've got a couple of sponsors that are from there. They, they come at the end of the show. Ah. But, um, yeah. It's something new brought to you by methamphetamines. <laughs> okay. You want to stay up no. for four days? <laughs> God bless this meth. You got to be relatable. <laughs>
<laughs> Wait, are you telling me that this is not relatable? <laughs> Neither of us are relatable. Are you kidding me? Yeah. We work in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, we do things that people can never even understand. Uh, we're talking about getting shot by fake bullets and actually yeah. dying and yeah. being in those situations. I had to have a conversation with somebody. We were talking about, uh, I can't remember exactly what the, the, the scenario was, but they, I said, well, you never work with children, dogs, or yeah. animals. Yeah. And yeah, I was, it was somebody that didn't have any idea what that meant. And it was... Let's, uh, I, so one example is I went to the set of scrubs and we're shooting um, something and they had a child that like is a newborn, mm -hmm. but the child can only be in the room for like 12 minutes Yeah, because it's a newborn, but then they, it's, they're, they're mimicking a birth. And so they cover it in jelly. And so it's just jelly covered baby who's screaming crying because this isn't what it is and the mom's like eh, 1200 bucks yeah and you're like what are you doing with your child and i'm shooting this stuff and uh it was funny that was actually the day that my sister came with me to work and was able to shoot, watch all this happen she's like that's so amazing i'm like yeah no it's a disaster yeah you know how long it takes because this kid can only be on the set for 10 minutes now everybody's got to reset you have to do it again but it's got to have a half an hour off and then you reapply the jelly and then you yeah. push it out again and now you get a dog and the dog is supposed to be able to jump a certain height or do whatever it's supposed to do. Or you're shooting Beethoven with Tom Hanks or whatever the movie was. Uh, it was Josh Groden, first of all. <laughs> Josh Groden, yes. Sorry. Rest in peace. I, I will not stand for this Groden erasure. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that. What, which one did uh, Tom Hanks do? Oh, Hooch. Uh, Turner and Hooch. Turner and Hooch. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So you've got this dog that's your co-star, and you're like, "Oh, come on, man!" He's like, "No, he's got, he's got a slobber all over you." Oh, yeah, well, Hanks, so I know, Hanks, I know Hanks is like the nice guy. So he's he's very, very yeah. I feel like Hanks goes to his agent and was like, uh, "My name better be above the dogs on the poster." <laughs> yeah, if if that dog walks on the stage for the Oscar <laughs> yeah. after or before I do, I'm gonna be really frustrated. I want to see his trailer. <laughs> yeah. I worked with dogs. I did that Katy Perry music video with all the dogs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Master, because it was dogs who were doing tricks, and we were way behind schedule. And the <laughs> because of the dogs, dogs, and it was also well, also that was the weirdest. That like when I got to set to like, um, and like don't yell at me because I know it's not the same at all. But I was going to say, like, working on set is similar to the military in that it's just hurry up and wait. Like, you're just, you get up, you're there, and then there's nothing. So I show up to set at, like, 6 a.m., and mm -hmm. they're still building the set. Literally still building the set. That And, that, <clears throat> and what people don't understand is, you know how valuable your time is. Yeah. So whatever job you're going to, you know that the moment you walk into that job, you're going to start that job. And yeah. so you, you get yourself amped yeah. up in the car and you're listening to music or whatever in order to, okay, this is going to be my day, whatever it may be, or wherever you might be working. However, in, in this industry, a lot of times you've gone through that process because you're like, oh, geez, this is kind of a big deal. And you get there and it's like, yeah, we'll see you at two. You're like, well, it's six thirty in the morning. Yeah, that particular day, I remember. <laughs> like, like, what? I started at six, and we didn't start filming until one. <laughs> there you go. We got breakfast <laughs> and lunch, and then we started filming. And it was You're like, now I need a nap. Yeah, it was very like high profile, where they're <laughs> like, you had, you had to surrender your cell phone. Oh yeah, yeah. So, like I brought a book, and then I just finished it, and I was like, well, what the fuck am I gonna do now? <laughs> And it was a boring book. Yeah. On that set, it was uh, uh, dogs, like, doing tricks. But the thing about dogs is they're dogs, you know? So, like, they would do a trick, and then they would give the treat. And then they would do a trick, and they would give it the treat. And they were still, like, behind and not getting it. And they were just practicing. And then 
dog's not hungry anymore. Yeah, has he's fifteen no treats motivated in it. by a treat. Yeah. That's just, like us. Yeah, he wants to just lie down. If, if you open up the craft services to us, yeah. I'm going to eat the bagels and now yeah. I need a nap. Yeah, <laughs> that's the worst thing during pandemic. Craft service um, shut down, didn't it? Yeah. Well, how it would be now instead of just being like, "Hey, here's a big table with everything you want," you have to go and there's a person yeah. there who'd be like, "What can I get for you?" Yeah. And I just feel bad because whenever I work a set my one of my goals is always like how many cups of coffee can i drink today so I'll, when i was doing westworld i got to 17. no are you oh. serious oh yeah i mean that was also i was that was four consecutive 17 hour days you drink 17 cups of coffee on oh, yeah. in 17 every day so for 17 days that was only just one day that was on like the third day when i was like oh like, good jeez so luckily that was shooting literally 20 minutes from my house. So I'm in Echo Park. That was in downtown LA. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's nothing to the majority of the people listening to this. But sometimes I worked a show where I have to drive an hour and a half. Like I was doing the shows like out in the desert or whatever. But this was like cool. So I, you know, we wrap up, I drive home, I try to catch some sleep, then I have to go back. Also one of the reasons why we're striking, maybe. But uh and I'm just like, cool, I'm going to just like go, just coffee, coffee, coffee. But now you have to literally go and like some very lovely young woman who's reading a book herself will be like, oh, what can I get for you? And I just feel like a jerk being like, I'll take another one of those coffees, please. Um, Even though I know that's why she's there. I just still, I don't like. Me neither. Yeah, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I, I feel the same way. I mean, no matter what our position is on the set. Yeah. When you find it, when somebody, you can see that somebody's coming over to, to, to kind of just, you know, not placate you. That's, that's the wrong word, but, um, I guess create comfort for you. Yeah. You're like, I, I'm comfortable. It's fine. Yeah. I, and if I need, I'll walk over there. I don't need to, Yeah. you know, but they're like, well, but what would you want? Cause we're going to order things for you. Yeah, you're just like, no, I'm just like, yeah, just uh, water. Jeez, oh, I'll finish whatever they didn't eat. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever's left over, I'll just uh, grab a. Just because, and, and I think it's important that all of us have been in the service industry and had yeah. those aspects of of even yeah. whatever whatever it may be, but in production for sure. You're an intern, then you're this, then you're that, then you you know there's a ladder to climb yeah but then you you understand what that ladder is yeah. like so if you if you jump rungs on that ladder you're like well we can tell which ones you jump because you kind of act like a dick yeah so don't act like exactly. a dick you know this yeah what what are you gonna have i'll have what you're having <laughs> yeah i'll make it easy because I'm a I'm a vacuum cleaner. I'll if you're having a turkey sandwich, I'll have a turkey sandwich. I don't know. Yeah, I don't need. I, I don't need to eat for three days. It's fine. I don't care. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny, like, like no dogs, no kids. So I just had this audition and a callback for this commercial that I feel pretty good about. Which I'm trying not to get too my hopes up because I feel like whenever you get your hopes up, that's when like you don't get it. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. It was also weird because it's a. Uh, I'm playing like a dad, and I was like, "Oh, I'm. Oh, I forgot. I'm old now." You're like, like, "Oh shit, I'm Peter." I could be, yeah. <laughs> I could have, and I'm like, "Oh, I guess I know people that my age who have kids, so that makes sense." But it's like, Ugh. I am not ready for this responsibility to be a fake dad. <laughs> but I was at the callback, and um, that's when I finally saw all the kid actors coming in for the kid role. And I'm just looking at them and I'm like, all right, which one looks like they could be mine? <laughs> exactly. I, I hope you're good. You're like, like I, I'm Mexican and Jewish. Yeah. I don't see any of you guys here. Yeah. They're like, well, you don't look like you're Mexican and Jewish. Well, that's kind of what I'm bringing to the table. <laughs> I can be a chameleon. Yeah. But I'm looking at the kids and I'm just like, all right, I think that one could work. That one could work, which is a weird thing to say out loud. Pointing at children. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Yes. They give you like a little sticker to put on their cheek. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. No. no. Yes. Hey, it's the pandemic. We have to we have to color code everybody. No. You're like, well, this is ridiculous. 
which was the beginning of it. I was, because uh, I, I obviously was setting up studios and doing all stuff during the very beginning of this. And and uh, and then as production started to open up, <clears throat> they had to be extremely strict about how they were going to shoot things. And so depending on what it was you were doing and how how much you mattered essentially yeah is what color you wore in a t-shirt so if you show up on set in a yellow t-shirt they're like Pfft. we only talked to the blue t-shirts <laughs> that's right original star trek where they go down to the planet and the person in the red shirt is like you're not coming back <laughs> yeah exactly so it was kind of, and and I I thought that was an awkward way to kind of set things up uh, initially, but you know what are you going to do? Everybody at that point, everybody was just trying to figure out what this was, what it's going to become, what the impact's going to be, and so there's there's somebody in some office that's like, well, let's just color code the yeah. people. Yeah, you're like, well, what color should we use? I'm like, well. Well, that's a great question. Wow. <laughs> and there's there's a lot of jokes in there that I will not say. Yes. In case. Um, but, but, but we'll give you a little silence for you to think of them when you're on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of fluorescence. <laughs> a lot of participation portion. Yeah. Uh, I was like, wait, what, what am I wearing? Yeah. Okay, that seems... That seems insensitive. Yeah. <laughs> Just like this, I don't know if I showed you this. Did I, did I show you this? This is that piece of artwork. This is this is a callback for anybody that hasn't, or it, for the 12 people that watch us every week, you'll recognize yeah. this. But I, in the this this app, they talk to people, part of this community of people in, in this app, which... Great app, enjoy everybody, et cetera, et cetera. Qualification, qualification. Um, one of the people is a, an artist. And actually, her stuff is pretty amazing. Like some of it's like $5,000. And it's it's uh, it's kind of based on, I guess, uh, like a Beetlejuice type of theme. Mm. Um She's a very unique person, which is the best way to describe that. So I bought this, and she made it for me. Okay. And I have no idea what it is. Ah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, there's some, uh... but it's like uh, it's like polyurethane or whatever with yeah. It's like a little, uh, it's like a little worm there, huh? Yeah, well, it's coming out of an oyster. I have no idea what's going on here. My friend, that it's that's art. You're not supposed to know. It's just to make you feel ways about things. I don't know what that makes me feel. I like it. I do too. That's why I bought it. Yeah. But I don't know where to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know to put it on the, the uh, threshold. Centerpiece of the dinner table. Yeah. So, um, hey, Peter, what is this? And you say... <laughs> I got no idea. What do you think it is? Exactly. It's a Rorschach test. Yeah. You tell me what you think it is. And that's when you get to actually know people. Because the people I've shown that to have said really weird things about it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that I don't see that. But I get where you're coming from now that you've put your perspective onto it. <laughs> so that exists. So now this is a Hollywood ammunition and outsider art appreciation podcast. Listen, it's whatever sticks, man. We're just doing the best we can. (laughs) What else do I have down here? Uh, 
Uh, I was thinking about Lorena Bobbert. Jesus. I, I, I was listening to the 90s nostalgia podcast. Got it. Well, you know what I mean? Like, it was one of those things where they, somebody brought up the fact that she had done what she did to him. And then I started to think about it, and they were kind of describing it. I was like, yeah, that is pretty fucked up. Like, they. She, she dismembered him and then threw it in the woods or in a field or whatever it was. Yeah. They actually found it and then put it back on and he went into porn. Yeah. I mean, a tale as old as time. And that's maybe what this is based on. I have Ooh. no idea. <laughs> I have it yeah. uh. But... Yeah, so it's one of those things that you sit down, and there's so many times like you'll sit, yeah, because I I imbibe a lot of information and and uh, I read a lot and things like that, and brag you'll, you'll sit there and you you, you yeah <laughs> that's a, that's a humble brag, yeah. but uh, you'll sit there and you're like, wow, that was really messed up. Like what's yeah, going I mean, on in my like what's the cynicism in my head that I forget that those things happen to people. Well, I mean, the, the, he was a monster. Um, if you if you remember the case, he like no, oh, he like regularly beat and raped her. Is that true? Yeah, that's why she that's why she did this. And he he had threatened to kill her several times. He was a monster. Really? Yeah. Uh, these are allegations. If he hasn't been convicted of these things. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have no you, idea. you want to come after me, John Wayne Bobbitt? Bring, bring it on. <laughs> I, I, uh, God, this... if he's one of the people who watches this podcast, can you imagine? <laughs> he like pops up on some algorithm, yeah. <laughs> some like weird, you know, Instagram thing. Like, hey, I'm you fine, were mentioned fine. allegedly. Allegedly, that means we are legal, legally safe. Yes. So allegedly, what did he do? Because I didn't know any of that. I oh, thought yeah. I, th I thought he he just was he cheated on her, and then she. No, no, he was a uh, um, incredibly violent and abusive. Really? Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh, that's well. Then I don't know. Maybe I was deserved. Yeah, and this this was the her committing her actions were. Uh, the final straw after another alleged sexual assault. Did she, what was her sentence? Um, that I don't remember. Cause I think it wasn't that bad probably because, because of the, you know, alleged information we've just been hearing. Well, and that brings me to Hollywood surgeries. Like they're <clears throat> being in the industry. We we've, come across so many people that have surgeries and and um i worked with joan rivers a lot and that was a tragedy she went in for something to um do essentially something basic and it just it, it didn't work out clearly and rest in peace and i i love joan and and i love the the brief moments that i could spend with her and, and her daughter and stuff through my through my job but another thing that came up was, I, as I was thinking about that, you can go down like a wormhole on YouTube or wherever it is and look at like photographs of things that people are doing to themselves. Yeah. It's insane. They're putting cement in their butts. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Can you imagine that that's a sentence that somebody would say? That sounds like a, like a, a punishment in a, a less evolved time. You know, yeah, exactly. Problem, it's like you're standing next to a guillotine or yeah. you're going to get cement in your butt. No. Yeah. Actually, cement in my butt makes my jeans fit better. Yeah. Well... Yeah, there's the big one now. It's the it's called a Brazilian butt lift. Yeah, but people are going overseas to do it and they're dying from it. Oh yeah, they're dying from it. And a lot of what they'll do is that where it's just like they'll 
it's like a liposuction where they take fat from one place and they inject it into the butt, except they don't know what they're doing. And they're just, uh, um, yeah, it has like the highest mortality rate of any cosmetic surgery by far. Yeah, well, that's why I was, yeah, exactly. That's why I was bringing it up is they, yeah. everybody that's having this thing done. Well, not everybody, clearly. When uh, it's done right, but, it looks great. Ladies, just keep it up. <laughs> but understandably, if you're going to go somewhere else to have something major done, don't do that. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not a doctor and I, I don't disseminate uh, medical information. I get what, what no I, what research. Like. However, if you're going to go to a third world country or another country to have something done because you couldn't have it done where you live, it's probably a bad idea. What I'm hearing from you is that this is really <laughs> a podcast about how the American healthcare system is broken. And no, I think it's the opposite. I think they're wonderful. Healthcare for everyone. Got it. Yo, you, you, let's see. You. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I actually, I'm hoping that you're getting the opposite. I, I think that uh, when, when in the right hands, you will be treated properly. But it's sometimes hard to find the right hands. Yeah, I just, I just think it's ridiculous that, because um, I've been dealing with some health issues and dealing with my healthcare provider has just mm -hmm. been a nightmare. But um, I also think it's weird that you can have health insurance. If I break my arm, my health insurance will, will heal that bone. You know, mm -hmm. if I crack a rib, they heal that bone. My teeth, which are just bones in my body, I have to have different insurance for. And it's a fortune. And it's a fortune for my mouth bones. My, I call them my outside bones because they're the only bones on the outside. <laughs> but uh and you're, you're like but they okay so you'll you'll fix this this yeah. is twenty thousand dollars to fix free yeah however this is 1200 bucks and i've got to pay 800 yeah. of the 1200 what, the, what are we doing here i remember like, what am i paying for years ago when i was more um financially attractive oh sorry go ahead yeah. Uh, I've only gotten more attractive with age, Peter. <laughs> yeah, me too. Are, Clearly. Going in opposite directions there. <laughs> but I remember I had like uh, like a bad like cavity um, or whatever. And they're like, oh, you need like a root canal. And it's going to be like, it was like 1200 bucks. Like 1200 600 bucks. And I just like, I was at a point in my life where like, I just didn't have $1,200. Like. This was like in my like in my twenties, you know, and I was just like, "That's a lot of money." Yeah, and I was just like, "All right, how much to pull it out?" And they're like, "Oh, we can do that for like one hundred fifty bucks." So I was like, "All right, just take it out." So I literally had to make the decision, and like that's insane. So this is a Hollywood ammunition, nineties um, nostalgia. Uh, uh, let's take down. The current American <laughs> medical system podcast. Yes. Hey, man. Hey, you, whatever works. <clears throat> that's 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 why everybody listens. You oh, get yeah. the more listeners because you kind of hit every every step of the way. You want know to yeah. talk about parenting? That's exhausting. I'm going to skip that just for my own. Yeah, I'm going to skip that. Too. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah, that's your. You, you, you brought that on. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, this is a picture of my kid. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> There's that gym. You know what it looks like? Looks like a kid. Well done. I think it was Dimitri Martin. It's like people, <laughs> people love saying, Oh, do you want to see a picture of my kid? But they hate hearing if you respond, like, Oh, do you want to see another picture of your kid? <laughs> uh, why do you have pictures of my children? Oh, oh my God. So what else? So the week, what's been going on at work and everything? Eh, it's more of the same. It's uh, you know, we tried over that last, last time. It feels like it would just be, uh, you know. But no, nothing happened. Like nobody spit on you or no, no, got no. a fight or something. Well worn territory. It's 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 every day. <laughs> every day is the same. Every day is like Sunday. You know, that's a Morrissey song. We are now a Morrissey podcast. 
we've had every every branch on the hey, way down. You gotta just like you gotta just like hit. <laughs> I watched the I watched the movie um, the other day. Uh-huh. Uh, so I was like, ah, oh, I want to like it's Halloween ish time. I want to watch like a horror mo- movie, but like something fun. I found this movie called Willie's Wonderland. What the hell is that? It stars Nicolas Cage. Of course. It is that makes sense. bonkers. It's not good. I'm going to just, if anyone's like, oh, I'm like, it's not good. but Which is kind of his thing yeah. at this point, isn't it? But he it? actually does like a good job in it. It's like uh-huh. interesting. And I, I like the premise is there's an evil Chuck E. Cheese type place um, where, you know, where the, the animatronic characters, but they're, they come alive at night and like eat people. So he gets trapped in there overnight. You know, I'm going to watch this. That sounds fantastic. He gets trapped in overnight and uh, he has to survive the night. And then they involve like a group of teens because like horror movie. But uh, what I love is that Nick Cage doesn't have a single line of dialogue. His character doesn't talk, which I see just yell. No, he doesn't like really make any sort of sounds other than the occasional like grunt. They're, they, they're like, like was, here's here's well guess here's the pitch and a lot of times you'll see that with bruce willis and, and a lot of the the uh characters they're they're, they're in the the trailer and so you see them in the trailer and you turn on the movie and they're in there for yeah. 60 seconds yeah and they say i'm gonna give you a million dollars just do this yeah. <laughs> oh, he's like, in it. well don't like he's like do i have any dialogue dialogues two million no no dialogue all right no, perfect I feel, so he's in it through the whole way you know he's like <laughs> yeah. Again, he's like yeah but they do it in one day yeah. like they're like okay let's put him yeah. in this place let's put him in this place but i feel he just pokes his head in i feel like he's like fully in it. it's not like that he's like beginning to end he's like the driving force but i feel like he had dialogue but I feel Nick Cage showed up and was like, what if my character didn't talk <laughs> just as a choice? And they're like, sure, we, we can make this work. Des- desperately rewriting the script. It... <laughs> yeah. I felt like that was a little bit of what happened with Keanu Reeves. Cause Keanu, like in the early movies, you'd sit there and you'd, you'd say, uh, so, Hmm. Let's cut out most of this. And then he actually became a pretty good actor. Oh, yeah. And now he became a great actor. And he's actually a really nice guy. And he's a great guy. And so that really helps with, with you know, kind of being on board with him. Yeah. And uh, he is. He's just, a, he's just a good guy. And so I, because I did stuff with him during the Matrix uh, uh, trilogy or however many of those I made. And they were... All, all, all those things but then the 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 current one that he's doing where he's shooting everybody what, what are yeah. those called like john wick john wick those are great yeah but he has three sentences of dialogue <laughs> you killed my dog yeah it's a real less is more approach yeah which is which is great it works i mean if you know if you know what you're dealing with deal yeah. with it properly it's like fast and the furious you've got a bunch of you know type a personalities and so they all get together and you have one scene where they're all talking to each other and talking over one another and things like that you like okay can we take that ah fuck it let's just that's yeah. good we'll do- <laughs> that franchise fast and furious first movie it's a street gang who is stealing combination vh like vcr dvd players yeah by the last one they're strapping rockets the cars and flying into outer space stop it. they become like international spies stopping terrorists and it's such a natural progression where and like, oh. each one of them is getting their rate yeah so let's say what what do you think vin diesel's at 11 million 12 million for a movie or whatever uh, when they started it was probably 200 grand and oh, then yeah. it just kept I building these ones i feel like vin's at like the 20 mark now but just for fast well, he might yeah, he, yeah. He's also, like, when he's also, I feel like he's got to be like exec producing on it. Well, he gets back end. Well, that's like Johnny Depp would get a lot of back end 
for yeah. um because <laughs> i so, heard about that in the 90s <laughs> the uh celebrity gossip podcast now yeah exactly no but he he'd get back end on the pirates and so you get points yeah. so the way it works is instead of getting your rate which could be you know 10 20 million dollars whatever the if you go to arbitration and you figure out what your rate is based on what they're going to make all that you you can actually negotiate to have the back end if you believe in the project enough and um uh, and so yeah, he did one and of the he ones was uh he Jack killed Nicholson forgo like forgoed his like rate for batman 89 and just got points on the back end and ended up getting paid almost a hundred million dollars in 1989 money. What movie? Batman. Oh, Batman. I, I didn't understand what you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you, if you believe that this is going to become what yeah. you think it's going to become, or you're going to sign your name to it and, or you become an executive producer instead of just, you know, the, the face of it. Uh, yeah, there's, there's big money on the back end. Yeah. Because you see these movies making billions of dollars, especially over the years and in, in Europe and yeah, Asia and all these different years. places. And you're like, well, I only made $20 million on that, which obviously is a huge amount of money to have made. However, the movie made $16 billion. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. And I think that's why Chris Pine has, has started to... I mean, he, his star is rising very, very quickly. And I... I, I think a lot of that has to do with not he's very talented and you know he went he so handsome. Off, and he's handsome and 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 all those things um because i will disparage no celebrity just in case the one of them were ever watch this which won't happen but <laughs> but he is he's really good and he it's it it seems like he's he's kind of got the business aspect of it I down know. which is which is the hardest part you won't disparage any celebrity, but that's what I'm here for, baby. <laughs> exactly. Adrian Zamed. <laughs> Fuck off. Fortunately, nobody knows who that is, which actually is me disparaging this person. Go pick the <laughs> No, I think that person's wonderful. Let me see. Where's Adrian in my notes? Oh, shit. <laughs> right, who else? Jamie Gertz. Uh, you're cool. Love me some Gertz. Oh man, let's see. Let's see one that I could say. Jeez. That might take me a second. You know what? Well, Robert Blake, I'm gonna say you're not a good guy. I and I but I never I mean, other than you know, dealing with the uh crime he did not commit based on the jury's Oh, was he I thought summation. He, I thought he was found guilty. Never mind, Robert Blake, you and me were cool. <laughs> Love you in Lost Highway. Hey, listen, man. Bill Cosby's out. Yeah. OJ's walking around. I, I'm going to go on record and say Bill Cosby, <laughs> uh, not the best. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've, I've uh, well, look, everybody, you know, yeah, I mean, once a jury of your peers has decided <laughs> what's going to happen to you, that's well, kind of what's got to go by. Peers would be a jury of people who systematically drugged and raped women <laughs> over the course of 30 years. It's difficult to find a pool like that. No, no, he's good. He's good. Was she on board at all? Well, at the beginning, yeah, she was like quoting my jokes and stuff. You're good. What happened after that? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Things got a little hazy for you or for her. <laughs> oh, you gave me the hiccups. Oh, I either start to sneeze or hiccup. Oh, I love this body. It gives me so many wonderful things to deal with. <laughs> well, as long as one person does, that's all you can hope for. You just made me hiccup through my laugh. You walked on your own laugh on my laugh on your laugh. Right. <laughs> Bro. Oh, uh, well, that 
was wonderful. Thank you so much. And if this is what we're going for, we nailed it. And, uh, Roddy, thank you for being a part of this again. And, um, I appreciate you taking the time to do this and, and, uh, I appreciate you as a friend and I want to extend the offer to have you anytime. I really. appreciate it. Thank you so much, yeah. everybody. It's been a pleasure except for Adrian Zemed. You know what you did. <laughs> And Antoine put up a picture of Adrian Cement. What's his name? Because <laughs> Grease Two is my favorite movie, so I love Adrian Cement. I just we're just, he, we were just goofing. <laughs> Come on, Adrian, you know if, what's up. Yeah, if you if you got something going on, that'd be great for me. Just yeah. <laughs> we're just dicking around. Yeah, where is that? Where is that? We're just having a laugh. Where is that? We've got so much. I will. We, uh, we we've got porn stars artists. Yeah. We got a. This is a multifaceted podcast. It turns out we we hit every base, wow. sometimes twice, and then we run out in the outfit. We're not even paying attention. <laughs> we go backwards and run into the locker room. <laughs> That's why we work with dogs and children. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. See you.